If on the one hand you lust for the lo-fi futurism of Star Wars, and on the other hand you're mystified by the Machiavellian minefield of Game of Thrones, well chuck in some giant fucking robots and put your hands together for Battletech. So what in the fuck is Battletech exactly? A tabletop game, turn-based strategy, pen and paper role-playing? The answer to all three amorphous queries? A resounding fuck yes! More accurately, depending on your personal taste and style of preferred play, Battletech can actually alternate between being an action-packed tabletop game easily completed in, say, an hour or less, a full-blown hex-based war simulation with a light peppering of RPG and... Peter Jackson Extended Edition Playtimes, or a full-blown pen and paper RPG with one of the richest combat systems and backstories in the medium's history. Yet for all its fathomless Nietzschean depths, the game is also deceptively simple. Look, I think we've all, any of us who have played D&D, I think we've all had that horrific experience where you sort of timidly approach the comic store counter, you hold the 20-sided die aloft, and then there's that soul-crushing moment when the cashier gives you that alright, who just busted ass look, and you can physically feel your virginity growing back. Yeah, well, with Battletech, you play it with just two six-sided dice. For all they know, you're playing sorry. It's like Yahtzee, but without all the sped-up audio to compensate for a dearth of talent and comedic timing. Oh! <laughs> oh, but it's just giant robots, I hear you, Chortle. I've seen Mecha in every conceivable, increasingly spiky and impractical configuration in every shitty anime from Burst Angel to Evangelion. What the fuck makes this any different from, say... Robotech. Well, thanks for asking, disembodied voice indicative of early onset schizophrenia. The novelty of Battletech, beyond the fact that it's just plain fun to play, is twofold. Because the way mechs are depicted, even when, as per the Axeman or the Highlander, a mech does actually employ melee or weapon combat, they're treated, designed, and depicted more often as glorified fighter jets or tanks. Hell, the cockpit of the Mad Cat was recently revealed to have been literally copied and pasted from the nose of a B-2 bomb. These are practical, endlessly customizable machines, albeit with their own individual character, whose pilots are treated more often than not less like preening, cactus-quaffed animu caricatures a la Gundam Wing, and much more like, say, the aces from Top Gun, but with less latent homoeroticism. Grizzled fuckers in flight jackets who know what a pussy feels like. Oh, but the latter half of Battletech's two-pronged appeal is undoubtedly the lore. You thought Star Wars or 40k had an expansive backstory. Battletech is fucking Lorehammer. Welcome to the Inner Sphere, an elephantine expanse over 500 light years in diameter, or roughly a third the size of Gabe Newell's wedding band, encompassing 2 million stars and 2,000 inhabited planets, perpetually spooned by a crescent-shaped region of uncharted space known as the Periphery. Since the inception of faster-than-light travel came a mass exodus of billions of human beings, most of whom were from California. But with colonization comes micromanagement, and when the Redcoats tried to tax their dilithium tea or some shit, they pumped them full of 30 calibers of freedom, and thus the first of the great houses, House Merrick, came to establish the Free Worlds League. Over the next three decades came the other great houses, Davion, a well-meaning but occasionally colonial nation whose bland starchy foodstuffs and subpar dental hygiene belies their Anglo underpinnings, Kurita, an honor-bound house devoted to ancient Japanese feudal codes of duty, loyalty, and poorly animated pornography. <laughs> Steiner, a sporadic Scandinavian aggressor that vacillates between staunch ally and invading the Orionland. And finally, House Lao, a compelling conglomerate chiefly reflective of Chinese culture, Merrick's neighbor and perpetual underdog of the galaxy. As the smallest of the great houses, they've been repeatedly stricken with a raging case of Venus envy, engaging in disastrous incursions into neighboring Daviot and repeatedly biting off more than they can Fu Manchu. <laughs> From the militaristic mire emerged the Battle Mech, death on two legs. After shellacking the shit out of each other for nearly two centuries, the disparate nations formed a tenuous alliance known as the Star League, ushering in 250 years of uninterrupted prosperity, attaining dizzying heights of technological and social progress, elevating mech design to a bona fide art form in the process. Then came Stefan Amaris, the Don Matrick of the Inner Sphere, feigning friendship with Richard Davion, the ruler of the Star League, and persuading him into dividing his own house, he 
would ultimately assassinate the paranoid princeling and wrest control of the Star League for himself until the brilliant General Kerensky, commander of the Star League military, slammed the refrigerator door on his dick. In the aftermath, the Star League descended into feudal anarchy, with each house vying for rulership, engaging in four disastrous, increasingly costly wars of succession. Repulsed by the avarice of the very houses he saved, Kerensky took his toys and fucked off to uncharted space, hell-bent on establishing a utopia along with a jaw-dropping 80% of the Star League's military. Having bombed each other back to the Bronze Age, and with Kerensky ganking on the toy soldiers, the Star League collapsed and the houses warred anew. Until a new enemy emerged from the periphery and started knocking the Intersphere flatter than hammered shit. The clans! Clan Wolf, Clan Ghost Bear, Clan Jade Falcon, and on and on, nearly 20 in all, suffering from varying degrees of batshit insanity. Adopting a Herbert Spencer survival of the fittest caste-based system of genetically enhanced super soldiers piloting vastly superior weaponry, albeit it in smaller numbers. The houses threw themselves against their obviously superior adversaries in skirmish after skirmish driven back consistently all the while until it was at last revealed that the clans were in fact the descendants of General Kerensky, perverted by isolation and the need to put down hundreds of years worth of mutiny, hell-bent on remaking the inner sphere into their unique brand of quasi-Darwinian gut fuck. As the clans steamrolled the fuck over the inner sphere, faced with a far more powerful ally turned enemy, the rival houses would find themselves with just two choices, unite or go the way of Paul Stanley's voice. And that's just an overview of the core narrative, a cursory one, might I add. Before, after, and throughout these galactic parables, countless conflicts of varying degrees of intensity are played out with equivalent detail. The Merrick Civil War, the Smoke Jaguar Genocide, the Jihad, the Dark Age, and every solitary one has a full-length novel, sometimes several, devoted to it exclusively. The result? A world where the possibilities for role-playing or even a simple tactical skirmish, like me as I record this video, are bottomless. Don't judge, it's 2015. The more you descend the proverbial rabbit hole, the deeper it goes. Battletech is the Chicago pizza of gaming deep fucking dish. Sadly, even as I speak these words, there are those watching this who will only have learned about this franchise at precisely this moment, and there are some fairly compelling reasons for that. You see, after a veritable explosion in initial popularity from the mid-80s to the early 90s, spawning everything from a bitchin' trading card game like the one I hold in my hand right here, to an impressively adult animated series I remember loving as a kid, to full-blown virtual reality Battletech centers, sadly Fossa began to falter. The pricey Battletech centers, while visionary in a time before online gaming, were a glorified flop. The already complex tabletop roles were multiplying by the microsecond, and with the introduction of the innately superior clan technology, as much as I may love it, the game was knocked well the fuck off balance. Increasingly unwieldy, Battletech began to bleed players, taking refuge in excellent video game adaptations like MechWarrior 2, 3, and 4, Mech Commander, and my formal introduction, GameStorm's visionary MMO, Multiplayer Battletech. By the late 90s, along with good music, fashion, and our motherfucking economy, Battletech took the red eye out of relevance. Fossa was purchased by Microsoft, Battletech, I think, by WizKid shortly after that, and then once again in 2000. 2007 by Catalyst Game Labs, who thankfully has helmed a slight resurgence in recent years. Best of all, Catalyst have decided to be Iron Maiden on opposite day and carve some fat. As such, the formerly Beluga rulebook has been pared down to a more manageable page count, with the more complicated rule sets now relegated to the resoundingly fucking optional category. So how in the fuck do I even get started with Battletech, you ask? Well, probably the zenith of the Catalyst Games era of Battletech was the introduction of these highly convenient, extremely affordable Battletech introductory box sets. Basically, for between like 40 to 50 bucks, you get every solitary thing you need to liquidate some clan or scum or purge some freeborn filth. All the necessary documentation, you get the backstory, you get a map of the inner sphere, as you can see behind me, you get two high quality play mats and dice, not to mention 24 unpainted mechs. Without question, one of the best values in tabletop gaming. Bit of a disclaimer, though. If you decide to drop the Skrilla, be forewarned, the earlier printings of this box set had some very real quality control issues. They had like shitty mechs occasionally, paper maps even though they advertise cardboard. Fortunately, they're easy to distinguish from the newer improved version as they have a completely different orange cover with a great big like bipedal trash can looking Warhammer mech on the front. If you grab the one I hold in my velveteen digits, you should be fucking ace. 
for new mech warriors, if I have one cautionary caveat where Battletech is concerned, it's with the learning curve. Battletech is as deep as you want it to be, and with depth and complexity comes depth and complexity. <laughs> Thankfully, with the inclusion of some very brief quick start rules in the box, the rule book humping and perpetual page flipping is largely reserved for the first couple of games, after which you begin to better understand the rules and can slip into a more free flow combat situation, adding more depth as you become more comfortable with the game system. Role playing paraphernalia like record sheets right here can seem very very daunting I, apart from seeming very eerily familiar to anyone who's played mech warrior <laughs> they can seem very profoundly daunting to the layman until you realize that all you really ever do with them is cross some shit out and occasionally fill in some fucking dots if you can cheat on a math test, you can play some goddamn Battletech, people. But what about the leering fuckheads like myself, the honorary virgins who really do want to break out the character sheets and fucking roleplay? Well, then you're treated to what is, in my opinion, one of the finest roleplaying games on the market. The tactical action war game is called Battletech, and in a complete inversion of the video game licenses, the pen and paper RPG is actually entitled Mech Warrior. Though thanks to a timely bitch fit from Microsoft's legal division, even that was recently renamed A Time of War, replete with 90s ass Photoshop cover that makes Iron Maiden's Dance of Derp album cover look like a fucking Monet. Look pal, if your job is to draw robots for a living, Go ahead and keep drawing robots. Cover art notwithstanding, if you do take the role-playing plunge, what you get is two games for the price of one. A rockin' ass role-playing game you can, if you so desire, play all by its lonesome, but one that if you so choose, you can plug into the already brilliant tactical mech combat game of Battletech. Meaning, let's say your character's a mech warrior. You're palling around with your fellow mercs in the barracks and suddenly an alarm goes out. Freeborn fuckwads at five o'clock. You strap into your mech and boom, you're playing the tabletop game replete with terrain and miniatures with a shitload of RPG elements to further enrich the experience. Suddenly, your mech pilot, which in the normal game was standard McDefault future WWE champion of the world, is now you, and his formerly middling gunnery and piloting skills are whatever in the fuck yours are. If your cockpit is struck and your cockpit begins venting atmosphere or you're suddenly poisoned, maybe you have more endurance and therefore you don't pass out as quickly as a normal default mech pilot would directly in essence affecting the flow of combat thereby. And that brings me to the final bullet point in my outline here. I remain of the unflagging belief that the Battletech license has actually been treated uncharacteristically well in the realm of video games. While the quality of, say, Robotech or Zone of the Enders has gone up and down more times than Sasha Gray on a producer's dick, with just a couple hiccups, everything from Mech Commander to the Crescent Hawk's Inception has been utterly superb, but to me, therein lies the rub. Mech Assault is an excellent arcade action game. The Crescent Hawk's Revenge may actually be the first RTS ever made. Sorry, Game Failers fanboys, Dune 2 was not the first. And we all know any game with the word Mech Warrior in the title that isn't immediately followed by the word online is among the finest games on the PC platform. In short, it seems virtually every element of the tabletop Battletech experience has been brought to the video game industry, except the one that, in my opinion, would print the most fucking money the RPG! Sure, the Crescent Hawk's inception had a generous slathering of role-playing, but where's Battletech's answer to Mass Effect or The Witcher? The open galaxy mech sim where the simulation's every bit as deep in a conversation outside of the cockpit as it is when you're strapped into the fucker. Hell, I'm basically just describing the very same game I used as an example of my dream game in Dear Rageaholic No. 7, Razor Fist vs. Silent Hills. Fuck! Poland has always had a killer Battletech scene, and as I recall reading, CD Projekt just cranked out a spin-off studio devoted exclusively to the creation of video game adaptations of, wait for it, pen and paper role-playing games. Just fucking saying! Look, if any of the aforementioned appeals to you, from tabletop to video games, I implore you, as a lifelong mech warrior, give it a whirl. If you dig Magic the Gathering, 
give the card game a whirl. Fuck, that was practically my formal introduction to the series to begin with. It fucking rules. If you missed the bygone age of the mech sim, Mech Warrior 4 Mercenaries has been freeware for the past six fucking years. Give it the old junior college try. The tabletop game, the RPG, the novels, the comics. Sure, the franchise has limped along in recent years thanks to a devout following and warm memories of the faithful video game adaptations of the past, but with this new PC title coming out, arguably the most true to form, earnest conversion of the classic tabletop war game, I figure it's about half past time for us to bring back our battle tech. Razor Fist here, ejecting.